Shown here is the new oil separator for the 996 and first year 997. The lower left insert picture is a 2008 onward AOS. Open the deck lid and remove the air box. Begin by loosening the hose clamp holding the boot to the throttle body, green arrow. Then squeeze the tabs on the MAF connector to release it as indicated by the yellow arrows. Now open the harness holder clip, purple arrow, pull the oil filler tube up and out of its clip on the air box as indicated by the blue arrow. And finally, unbolt the 13 millimeter bolt holding the air box inside the engine compartment, red arrow, and carefully lift the air box out of the car. Remove the four 10 millimeter bolts, green arrows, and also the 10 millimeter nut, purple arrow, holding the throttle body to the engine. At the same time, also remove the electrical connector going into the throttle position sensor as indicated by the yellow arrow. If you have an early car with a throttle cable, rotate the throttle back enough to relieve tension on the throttle cable and slip it out of the plastic cable cam as shown here. On the older cars only, rotate the throttle body over to access the hose connection on the back side. On the older cars, use a pair of pliers and loosen and remove the hose clamp holding the hose onto the throttle body. Don't forget to pull the O-ring out of the intake plenum that seals the throttle body to it. Again, on the older cars only, follow the hose connection coming off of the throttle back to the control solenoid and press the wire piece in to release the electrical connector. Now place the hose solenoid assembly off to the side. Once the throttle body is removed, you'll need to remove the intake plenums. Begin by removing the air hose connection to the oil separator. Squeeze the black plastic connector, purple arrow, to disconnect the hose from the plenum. Once free, set the hose connection aside. Now loosen the hose clamp, securing the plenum to each manifold, green arrows. It's a good idea here to loosen the inner hose clamps first and then rotate the plenum to help break the seal that may have formed between the rubber. Then tighten the inner and loosen the outer clamps and do the same to break the connection between the rubber seals and the intake manifolds. Sometimes they can stick together making removal a bit difficult and this will help free them up. As you will note there is not a lot of room to work and anything that makes it easier will help. Once the hose clamps are loose, you should be able to push the intake seals into the plenum, then slide the plenum over to one side and pull it free of the manifold. Now remove the rear intake plenum tube. Like the front one, loosen the hose clamps, then push the plenum over to one side. Once removed, pull the vacuum hose off the connection to the resonance flap inside the rear plenum. The idea here is to gain as much space as possible inside the engine bay. Remove the two 8mm screws holding the hose connection to the left intake manifold. These screws also hold the retaining plate for the vacuum solenoid shown here just to the left. Once free, maneuver the hose, plate and solenoid up and out of the way. Now it's time to remove the left intake manifold. In this picture, we have the 996 engine out of the car to show the location of the six torque bolts that hold the manifold to the engine. As you can see here, clearance is the biggest problem with removing the bolts that hold the intake manifold to the engine. In this picture you can see that the coolant tank has been removed to provide even more access to the manifold bolts. The key here is patience. I found that a combination of U-joints and extensions help out quite a bit when removing the bolts. Take your time and you should be able to get them all out. If you would like to do a partial engine drop and remove the coolant tank to give you more room, please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with those tasks. Be sure to remember to set aside the bracket at the front of the intake manifold. This is one of those little things that is easy to forget when reassembling the motor. With all the bolts removed, 
Carefully maneuver the intake manifold out from under the fuel lines and wiring harness. As soon as you get the manifold out, be sure to stuff some rags or paper towels into the cylinder heads to prevent any dirt or loose objects from falling in. With the intake manifold removed, you now have access to the oil separator at the very back of the engine. Squeeze the connector on the upper part of the oil separator to release the hose connection as shown here. Now safely raise and support the car on jack stands. If you need additional help with that task, again follow the link provided at the end of this video. In this picture you can see the oil separator, green arrow, as it bolts to the side of the engine case near the transmission, red arrow. Begin by removing the hose clamp holding the rubber bellows to the bottom of the oil separator and pull it off. Next squeeze the quick disconnect fitting on the vacuum hose as indicated by the purple arrow to remove it from the oil separator. The final step is to remove the two 13 mm bolts holding the separator to the engine case as indicated by the yellow arrows. For the later cars with the newer style AOS you will need to remove both the power steering reservoir and the air conditioning compressor with its lines attached. To do this, you will first have to remove the accessory belt. To release tension on the belt, attach a 24 mm socket to a breaker bar, place it on the idler arm and turn it clockwise. To remove the power steering pump, first use a fluid pump or turkey baster to suck out as much power steering fluid as possible. Once the reservoir is empty, Remove the 10 mm nut securing the reservoir to the bracket as indicated by the yellow arrow. Then rotate the bayonet lock tab counterclockwise to remove the power steering fluid reservoir from the car. The compressor is held in place by three long 13 mm bolts. Remove the two front bolts along the front edge, red arrows. In order to get to the remaining AC compressor mounting bolt, you will first need to remove the temperature sensor mounted in the right passenger side manifold in between the first set of runners and indicated by the blue arrow. The sensor sits in a rubber sleeve that fits into a groove on the intake manifold. It's difficult to see it, but it will slide out. You can now access the remaining compressor bolt from in between the intake manifold, purple arrow. You'll need a combination of extensions and U-joints this bolt needs to be held in its upward position to remove the compressor. Once the compressor is free, unplug the electrical ground connector as indicated by the green arrow, lay down a rag or towel to protect the paint of the car and lay the compressor off to the side of the engine. Here is the AOS with the power steering reservoir and the first intake plenum removed. The AC compressor is still in place. You can see the three vacuum lines, red arrows, and the two water lines, blue arrows, that need to be removed. Just push in on the little blue clip and slide the water lines off. There will be a little coolant that spills out when you remove the water lines. Be prepared to catch it and dispose of it correctly and make sure to top up the fluid when you are done. The AOS sits in a tube that connects directly to the crankcase. Be sure to clean up all of the coolant before removing the AOS so that nothing gets into the case. The green arrow shows where the power steering reservoir was connected. This picture shows the air oil separator with the air conditioner compressor removed. If you're working on your earlier car and happen to be reading this to see the difference, you might be a little jealous on how much easier it is to remove on the later models. The AOS is shown by the red arrow, while the yellow arrows show where the bolts that hold the AC compressor go. The AOS has been removed from, but is still sitting in its mount in this picture. The blue arrow shows the opening to the crank where it sits. Make sure you place a clean rag in there so nothing can get into the crankcase while you are working. The two T20 torque screws that hold the AOS to the mount, yellow arrows, and the two T30 torque screws, red arrows, that hold the mount to the engine case have been removed. You do not need to remove these screws if you have removed the second plenum as there will be room to remove the AOS from the top of the engine. 
upper left insert is the air oil separator itself. Installation is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.